Welcome back programmers. In this episode of the Pure Basic 101 series, I will talk about loops. Yes, loops are a very important construction of any programming language. Just like the if, you can find loops in almost all programming languages. What are loops for? Well, it's simple. Loops are made to repeat a set of instructions many times, okay? Instead of writing the code many times, you just write it once and put it inside a loop and you just repeat the piece of code that is within the loop. In Pure Basic, you have four types of loops. For next, for each next, while, when, and repeat until. And for those four types of loops, you have also two ways of exit the loop, break and continue. And we'll check this in this episode. Loops are made to repeat a set of instructions, as I said. Yes, you can repeat it many times, okay, a specific number of times. You can repeat it forever or until a specific condition is met. And the different types is either you check the condition at the beginning or you check the condition at the end. And that's pretty much it. So let's jump into the code and I will show you what I mean. First type of loop is the for to step next. The default step is plus one. Okay, so you write, for example, 4x equals 2 to 6. You put your instructions in the middle and then next. What it's going to do is iterate this loop and for each time it enters the loop, it will increment the variable x by 1. Okay, so the x will take the values here in this particular example 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 from 2 to 6. Okay, so if I run this, if I really run this, You'll see the debug window 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That works. But you don't have to put a plus 1 step. You can step the value by a greater uh, number. Here, for example, I'm stepping by 3. Okay, 4x equals negative 1 to 7. Step 3, meaning the x will start at negative 1. Next iteration, the loops just add 3, so negative 1 plus 3 equals 2, then 5, and then 5 plus 3, 8, but we stop at 7, so we actually stop at 5. Let's test this one. Minus negative 1, 2, 5. Okay. Also, the step can be negative. You can count backwards. Okay, you can start at 2, let's say, and stop at negative 4, stepping negative 2. So 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4. You will enter the loop 4 times. Let's try this. 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4. You can mix styles okay with the step with the step negative step to count backwards and the added value of this for next loop is the fact that you have this x that is automatically incremented you can use your x in the loop and it will automatically with this instruction here be incremented every time you enter the loop incremented by the step you can work the for next loop with expressions, so you don't have to put just values in the two equals or in the two on the step. You can uh, use expressions. You can call a procedure. You can okay do some computations like two times square of a step two etc. That works. You can nest just like the if blocks that you can nest. You can also nest loops. Okay, here I'm doing a double loop. I'm looping the x from 0 to 6, 2 by 2, and the y from 0 to 8, 4 by 4. So the x is going to enter the loop uh, 
uh, four times, 0, 2, 4, 6. And for each loop of x, for each value of x, we will do uh, three loops of y, 0, 4, 8. So basically the code in the middle here of the two loops will be called four times time three times equals 12 times. Let's test it and show you that. Okay, zero, 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 four, zero. So first the x, then it's the y. And you see for each value of x, we have three values of y and we have zero, two, four, six, four values of x. So total of 12, 12 times. So here at the end, you can specify which variable the loops refers to. Okay, here you have four y, so you can put a next y, and here you have four x, and you can put the next x. It's not mandatory at all, it's just optional, it just helps the readability of your code. Here you know that you're at the end of the y loop, and here you know that you are at the end of the x loop, but you can not put anything, and this will work if I remove the y here and I remove the x here. If I run it, it still works fine. Next loop type is the for each next. So it's a specific construction in pure basic to iterate through maps or lists. Okay. So let's say you have a list of names, new list names dot s. Okay. You can say for each names next. The loop will stop when you reach the end of your list when there are no more elements in your list that you have to read. So, okay, you start at the beginning and then when you reach the end of the list, you exit the loop. So it's very convenient when you have a list to just go through the whole list and do something with your element. You access the each, well, you access the current element of your list by calling uh, the name of the list with the parenthesis, just like this. You can do the same with a map. So let's say you have a map of strings called currency. You can call for each currency. And if you want to access the value, you, you call currency parenthesis. And if you want to access the value of the key, okay, you call map key of currency. Here, you, you, here you're going to get the key. Here you're going to get the value. And that way you iterate through all elements of your map. Next loop type is repeat until. So here you are repeating the set of instructions until a condition is met. But you are executing the instruction at least once. Here repeat go debug go until wait window event etc you are going to call this at least once and if you have the wait window event returning the pb event close window even on the first run it will exit the loop but you will have called the the instruction at least once instead of putting until you can put forever it will make an infinite loop be careful with infinite loop if you don't exit them somewhere your program is going to be stuck and you just will have to kill it with the Windows or the Linux or Mac OS uh, kill process feature because you won't be able to access it again. To do a repeat, uh, an infinite loop with a repeat, you can say repeat forever and it will repeat forever. And you see in my example here, I'm incrementing a variable called A, but I'm testing at some point, I'm doing a test on A and if A is greater than 10,000, I'm ending the program. So here I should remove that. It is wrong. So repeat forever, but be careful. Find a way to exit your loop. Uh, next and final type of loop in Pure Basic, the while when. The while loop works exactly as the repeat loop, but the condition is checked at the beginning of the loop not at the end, at the beginning. So if the condition is wrong, even on the first iteration, 
you will not execute any of the code inside. Okay? The minimum number of times your instructions within the loop are called is zero. They can not be called. Yes, because, as I said, the condition is checked at the beginning. You can do an infinite loop with a while loop as well. Just put while true, because true, well, it's always true, or while one greater than zero, it works always. And this will make an infinite loop. Once again, don't forget to exit the loop some in some way, because otherwise you're going to block your code. And that's, that's why, by the way, when you're running a window-based application, you have this infinite loop, repeat forever and within it, or repeat until wait window event equals pb close window. Uh, that's an infinite loop waiting for the events, and when you close the window, you're basically stopping your program. That's how it works. It's an infinite loop. So finally, in Pure Basic, you have two ways of exiting a loop. Here we have the end. Of course, it, the end terminates the program, but sometimes you want to exit the loop without terminating your program. You want to continue your instructions after the loop. So two ways of doing that, break and continue. Okay, the break, as the word says, will exit the loop just at the call of the break, okay? It exits the current loop. So here we have a for next loop, okay? For x equals 2 to 6. It should iterate 5 times. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I have a test here. If x is greater than 4, break. So when x reaches 5, which is greater than 4, it enters the if block and calls break, and that exits the loop, keeping the value of x being 5. So here, it goes directly from the break to the next instruction after the loop, here, after the next, debug x, and the debug x will display 5. We can run this and have a look. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? 2, 3, 4 are called here, and 5 is called here. I could even do something like that after, just to show you. Debug X. Okay? 2, 3, 4, after 5. So the 5 is really displayed at the end. So when we call the break, it goes, it exits the current loop. The break can have a parameter, some kind of parameter, and it's the number of loops it will exit at once. If you have nested loops, just like this one, while true, repeat, while true, break two. So I have three loops nested. If I call break2, it will exit the two levels of loops. So it will exit the while and exit the repeat. So it will jump right after the repeat forever here. And then I have, for the example, I have another break that will break the uh, while true loop here. So break n will, will uh, exit n level, levels of loops. Finally, sometimes you don't want to uh, you don't want to exit the loop, but you want to uh, skip the rest of the loop. You want to uh, go directly to the next iteration. Okay, so yes, I, I I misspoke earlier. It's not break and continue are not two ways of exiting loops. Break is a way of exiting a loop, and continue is a way of modifying the the flow of the loop. So how does it work? Basically, when you call continue, instead of going and executing the rest of your instructions, it will go to the next iteration. Basically, we'll skip the rest and go to the next iteration right away. So in this example here, for x equals 2 to 6, once again, we should have 5 times 5 iterations, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But if x equals 4, continue, 
because I'm debugging X here, this will never be called for the value four. I will really iterate five times, but the times where X equals four, it will go directly back to the beginning of the loop and go to the value five. If we run this, two, three, five, six, we're missing the four because the four goes directly back to the beginning. And not the beginning, but to the next iteration, to the next iteration, that's the correct wording. Continue will bring you to the next iteration of your loop. If it's a while, if you do continue in a while, you will go back to checking the condition again and running it, running it again. If it's a repeat, you go back at the beginning, repeat, and you start again the, the instruction in the loop. Uh, well, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. Tell me what you think of this Pure Basic 101 series and what I should do next. And I will see you very soon.